Hi guys, how you doing? Um, I just thought I'd do a quick video on the kettlebell swing just for those that are, are, are just starting out in the sessions. Um, so the kettlebell swing, this is a kettlebell, <laughs> the kettlebell swing is primarily a dynamic movement that targets the hamstrings and glutes. It's also really good, works your core as well, and it's obviously it's low impact because your feet are placed in the floor and stay there. So it's really good for, it's a good option for cardio, a bit of cardiovascular exercise and conditioning as well, if you, depending on the number of reps you do. So, it's, so it covers a lot of bases, and depending on how you use it, it can, you can focus more on, on one particular base. So for example, you might do hev a heavy kettlebell relative to your strength for maybe 10 reps, which will help work a bit of strength and power through the hamstrings and glutes. Or you could do a moderate weight for duration, maybe three to five minutes, maybe longer at a time, which will work the aerobic system and become a bit more like cardiovascular and muscle muscular endurance. So it's a really versatile thing with kettlebell with lots of exercises. But this is just the kettlebell swing we're going to focus on because this is the fundamental first exercise you need to learn. So the common, I'm going to go through some common mistakes first. The common mistake, well, the most common mistake that people make with the kettlebell swing is they treat it like a squat. So they bend their knees, okay, so they end up they perform the movement like this. Okay, so this is probably the most common um, way to, that the kettlebell is done incorrectly. So the reason that's incorrect is because ultimately the whole point in a swing, and this sort of kit with the kettlebell, is it's to target the hamstrings and glutes. When you bend the knee, you're bringing the quads. There's, there's multiple exercises for the quads already, like squats, okay, for example, uh, lunges, etc. So the whole point is the kettlebell is a tool that allows you to target different muscles in the legs that normal that normally you wouldn't target um, through the more traditional exercises like squats. If it was a, if it was meant to be a kettlebell squat, it would be called a kettlebell squat, but it's not. It's called a kettlebell swing. Um, so that's the first thing to, to be aware of. Try and think of it. Therefore, it's not an it's not a down and up movement. Try and think of it more as a back to forward movement. So try and think of it as that movement there. So. You'll have your knees slightly bent, okay? They'll be soft, they won't be poker straight, but they will be slightly bent. And that will just help keep most of the work getting done by the hamstrings and glutes. And it will keep the quads out as well, because the quads tire and get full of lactic acid. It gets very sore very quickly, and it won't, it's not very efficient for longer duration movements too. So, think of it as a back to front movement, okay? From there, you're going to hold the kettlebell. When it swings through, the key is to use momentum. So the common mistake number two that the folk make is that instead of relying on the momentum of the kettlebell, they use their shoulders and end up pulling it up like this, and then try and control it back down, and then raise it up like this. That's also incorrect. One, it brings in the shoulders too much, and it will put a lot of excessive pressure on your back. So if you don't, if you try and control the kettlebell with your arms and shoulders, it will almost guarantee back pain at some point. Okay, so the, uh, so the the thing you want to really do is just move with the bell, move with the swing that you create, and just let the kettlebell come to wherever it comes to, based on the momentum of the swing. So don't pull it up; just allow your arms to act as a pendulum, and it will just come up to wherever it comes to. Okay, you want to make sure that when you swing the kettlebell through, you want to keep it up nice and high. Okay, close to here. So it should just see the kettlebell almost as an extension of your of your hand, right? Hold on to it here, one hand or two hands. When you swing the kettlebell through, your wrist here should probably, well definitely will make contact with your inner thigh area here. And you want your sort of elbow to touch your rib, your ribs so that these, these, these should make contact. So that's the position. You'll be holding the kettlebell here, okay, and that'll be just behind you. So that's the sort of position you, you should be looking for. So you're hinging over the hips, chest down, shoulders back, and it, should, it has to be in contact with your body. The reason it has to be in contact with your body and so that as you then use your glutes and the hamstrings to drive the hips through, you nudge, you nudge for you nudge the kettlebell out in front of you, like so. So it's a pop on the hips to nudge it through. If your hand doesn't contact, if you keep it away and it's down here, at no point is the, 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 the kettlebell your wrist or your forearm making contact with your body. So it's impossible to nudge it through. If it's not in contact with your body, it's not possible to, to nudge it forward. And it means that any forward momentum you're creating is coming from your lower back and your shoulders. Okay, so in order to make sure it's a hamstring and glutes, you need to really drive through the hips. And it has, in order for that to happen, you need to make contact here. Okay, you squeeze the back side, that will then nudge the pelvis under, it will nudge the hips forward, and then it will explode it and nudge the kettlebell out to here. Just when it comes to when it comes to it, it will swing back down, and then you repeat the sequence. So I'm going to do a couple of reps to show you. 
what we're looking for. So you want a narrow, a narrow stance, that's another thing to think about. Narrow stance, feet pointing straight ahead, okay? To address the kettlebell, you're better off standing a couple inches behind it like this, okay? Because it means that if you come down to it, you push the hips back, you've got an automatic, you've already, you're creating a nice bit of tension to the hamstrings, and you've got an automatic angle, so that when you're ready to start, you're just going to pull the kettlebell up to here, and that will be you ready to go into the next swing, the first swing. Whereas if you stand over it, you might be more likely to then squat it. You're, you're squatting it down like that, and then you need to try and find and create some momentum from zero here, which is, which can be done, but I just think, if you're going to do it right, you may as well do it right, and that would mean, to me, standing a couple inches behind the kettlebell, like so. Give, you, give yourself that automatic angle, to here, and it just means that as soon as you lift it, you can pull it into your body, and then off you go, okay? So here has a few reps. Okay, the next thing to think about, have a look at the camera, but, is keep looking at the kettlebell with your eyes. Follow the line of the kettlebell with your head and eyes, okay? Push your hips through, nudge it out, and the reason for that is because you want to keep your neck in neutral at all times, if you're looking straight ahead all the time, you're swinging the bell down here, you're doing that, okay, so you're high for extending. It would be a cover of standing like this, like all the time, okay, so you don't really want to do that, you want to try to keep your neck in neutral. So if you follow the line of the bell, it will help keep everything in neutral here. It will also just help with the flow, you'll be able to flow and move with the bell a bit more naturally as well, okay. A um, couple more points, at the end of this, just that intro uh, video, once you get going, Try and get something's feeling is understanding. Once you do it a few times, to borrow Wim Hof's quote, once you do it a few times, it makes more sense. Um, the key, like, exhale, as you drive through, exhale. So the breathing as well, you have to exhale with every hip thrust basically forward. So you go. And that'll just help regulate your breathing. It'll also help give you a rhythm. Okay, so the key, as I said, whether you're doing one arm or two arms, is you need to make sure that your arm comes into contact with your torso, okay? That way, you can then push away, push your body at the kettlebell, or use your body to push the kettlebell and your arm away from your body. Equally, especially with one arm, you don't need to let it come up too high. So you want to keep your arms quite close to your body whatever comes naturally to you, so don't actively try and pull them up and away. Just swing, go, swing, go, okay? Keep the kettlebell up high, here, not here. Imagine there's a wall right behind your bum, and you're trying to get the kettlebell to touch the wall, just here, with every rep. And it's a, so it's a backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, okay? There's a couple of ways. A couple of variations in terms of how to swing it. Some folk keep a stiff leg and then pop the hips like that, right? So there's one version, swing, pop, swing, pop. The other version is swing, dip, hop, swing, dip, push. Neither is wrong, okay? They're just different variations, okay? So whatever one comes more naturally to you. Personally, I tend to find that for power-based um, kettlebells, the, when you're doing heavy weights and lighter and less reps, I tend to have a slight preference towards a stronger, stiffer leg and then just direct hip pop. But when it comes to the sort of like longer duration efficient stuff, like minutes, minute and a half, two minutes and up, I tend to find I get a bit more efficiency with more of a bob. That's a probably call, that's a weird call, uh, a bob, we'll call it a bob, right? So there's different styles, soft style and hard style, but anyway, that's not what this video's about. Just a wee brief intro of the kettlebell swing. Um, hopefully that made a bit of sense. Final point I mentioned there is try to not around the shoulders, so engage to the lats, keep it nice tight, upper back, chest out, shoulders back down, and don't let the kettlebell pull you down like this. So keep it tight, so we get a nice, strong, solid back position here. Pop, pop, okay, I'm sure there's other bits I've forgotten, but, um, <laughs> no, that's the main bits, honestly, I just wanted to get that done, give you a heads up before you try these for the first time. Okay, any questions, just give us a shout.